Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. After going 7-6 and six in 2019, with all six losses by just one possession, North Carolina went 8-4 and four in 2020, including a berth in the Orange Bowl. The Tar Heels come in at number 8 in our early Gridiron Expert Top 25, and expectations are very, very high in Chapel Hill. And they're high for so many reasons, guys. But first, you have to give so much credit to Mac Brown and the job he has done with this Tar Heels program. A major turnaround in 2019, even better in 2020, looking to be even better now in 2021. And it all starts with one man, with one guy, their quarterback, and Sam Howell, who last year threw for over 3,500 yards, 30 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions. Eight total starters return on offense. Ten starters return on defense. This team has so much depth, so much talent, so much experience, where not only are they maybe the coastal favorite, they could be the biggest challenge to Clemson in the ACC, and they could be a college football playoff dark horse if things go their way. So for today, we're going to take a look at North Carolina's schedule, guys. Again, we're not breaking down any predictions. The predictions for the Tar Heels will come much later. We're just analyzing their schedule. And we're going to start up here on September 3rd when they travel to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. And we've said it a couple times throughout these schedule previews that we believe that the Coastal really is a three-team race between North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Miami. Maybe group Pittsburgh in there if you want. But if you're looking for the big three right now, it's North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Miami, which means the result of those games, when all three of those teams play each other, will be so, so crucial. And so, right after week one, we are going to have a crucial matchup completed where you're going to see either North Carolina or Virginia Tech begin to control their own destiny in the Coastal after just one week. That's how important that first game is. So, they don't get to ease into their schedule at all. UNC has to just jump right on in, no room for error, facing a team they beat 56-45 to last year, uh, the key thing I take away from that is that they allowed 45 last year to the Hokies. A defense, 10 starters returning. Yes, there's a lot of depth there. It was the area and the side of the ball that needs the most improvement for North Carolina. We know Lane Stadium is going to be very difficult to play, especially if full capacity is allowed. It's on a Friday night. Kick off the season. This is a huge, huge game. Huge game where North Carolina and Matt Brown cannot afford to slip up. Not only for their title hopes of the ACC of winning the Coastal, but for playoff hopes as well because they are legitimate contenders in my eyes. After Virginia Tech, how big of a game as that is, Georgia State, Virginia, Georgia Tech, none of those, I think, concern too many people. I think the most difficult game out of all of those will be Virginia. Georgia Tech is certainly on the rise. They're improving under Jeff Collins. We saw that last year. But are they to the point where they can beat UNC, even though they do host the Tar Heels? Virginia beat North Carolina last year 44-41. to Again, We'll talk about some previous results here, and you'll see how many points that North Carolina was allowing last year. I mean, 45 to Virginia Tech, 44 to Virginia. They allowed 53 to Wake Forest. I mean, again, we see where the defense, again, is the area on the side of the ball that needs the most improvement because we know with Sam Howell under center, the offense is going to be just fine. We saw a lot of young, budding stars also emerge in that Orange Bowl loss to Texas A&M. So Georgia State, Virginia, Georgia Tech, in-state rivalry against Duke on October 2nd, a Duke team that UNC beat 56-24 to last year and seems to really be going in the wrong direction under David Cutcliffe. You know, we, we never really expected much from Duke. No one does. Everybody kind of just wants Duke to make a bowl game. That's what the Duke faithful want. Uh, Cutcliffe has been unable to produce that in recent years. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it this year in 2021, especially now that they've lost Chase Bryce, who didn't pan out with the Blue Devils, but would have been nice to see him do another year with the quarterback whisper. So Duke, not that big a deal. And Chapel Hill, the key stretch for North Carolina starts on October 9th. It ends on November 6th. Florida State, Miami, Notre Dame, Wake Forest. Those are the big, the big stretch for them, if you even want to call it that. I look at these two games here, though, guys. That's obviously the most important for North Carolina because they are conference games. The road game at Notre Dame is going to be tough. The road game at Notre Dame is going to be tough. That could be a top-10 showdown. It could be a game that has major playoff implications, depending on, on how both teams fare over the course of the season. But Florida State Miami are the big ones, and this Florida State game is no slouch. And do you remember last year, UNC was the fifth-ranked team in the country. They were the number five team in the country. They went down to Tallahassee to face off against a pitiful Florida State team, 
and the Seminoles beat North Carolina 31 to 28. 31 to 28. So obviously a little bit of bad blood there. Mac Brown, the Tar Heels, is going to look to avenge that loss from 2020. No doubt about that. But Florida State is going to be improving this year too. They showed signs of brilliance last year, but weren't really fully ready to take that next step. Mackenzie Milton, possibly in at quarterback as the starter. We know how good he was at UCF. Hopefully he can continue to be solid and recovering from that injury down at Florida State. Mike Norvell in year two, a full year now to really prepare with his squad. If I'm UNC, I'm not overlooking this game. I'm looking to win this game in dominating fashion if I can. Then you have Miami on October 16th. That's the big game here too. Remember, we talk about those three coastal teams, North Carolina, Virginia Tech, Miami. Depending on what happens here against Virginia Tech in week one, this Miami game is going to be very, very important, as if it wasn't already. If North Carolina beats Virginia Tech and beats Miami, they've pretty much got it locked up. Because if you look at the rest of the schedule, assuming they don't slip up anywhere here, is there any team here that North Carolina could slip up to? Maybe Pittsburgh? Maybe NC State? But even if they were to lose one of those games, they would still own the tiebreaker over Miami and Virginia Tech. They lose to the Hokies, though. The Miami game becomes so much more important because they need this win to stay alive in the hunt. They lose, get two conference losses to maybe the two biggest competitors in the division. It's over. Last year, North Carolina beat Miami 62-26 to in Miami at Hard Rock Stadium. That's unbelievable. Well, they had over 500, 600 rushing yards in that game. I mean, it was... An abysmal performance from Miami defensively. An unbelievable performance from North Carolina across the board, offensively and defensively. Very similar to Florida State here, Miami is going to be looking to avenge that loss that they suffered last year. An absolute embarrassment. But can they do it on the road? When you look at North Carolina here, guys, it's very favorable that not only they get three straight home games, but two of their biggest games are at home. Miami at home, to me, is a bigger deal than getting Virginia Tech at home this year. I think Miami's going to be a little bit more difficult than Virginia Tech for the Tar Heels. And they're getting that game later on in the year, which is beneficial for them, too. So Miami here, by week, at Notre Dame. Last year fell to the Fighting Irish 31-17 to in Chapel Hill. That was a Notre Dame team that obviously went on to make the college football playoff. We know Notre Dame might take a step back this year. A lot of big changes across the board, especially on offense. I would not rule out an upset in South Bend. I would not rule out an upset in South Bend, especially if North Carolina is riding high here. Maybe they're undefeated. Maybe they're just a one-loss team. This game could have major playoff implications for both teams, but maybe more so for North Carolina than the Fighting Irish. So I'm not ruling out an upset there. We'll predict these games much later on. But this Notre Dame game is very intriguing, but luckily not a conference game for the Tar Heels. So if they were to lose this game, it doesn't count towards their conference record unlike it did last year when Notre Dame was a member of the ACC, just for that one year due to COVID. And then Wake Forest rounds out that little four-game stretch we were talking about. Remember, the Tar Heels only beat the Demon Deacons 59-53 to last year. Dave Clawson continuing to do a great job down in Winston-Salem. I would expect nothing less again in 2021, but to come on the road to Chapel Hill to get a win. Again, we're not predicting anything, but the odds are not in the favor of the Demon Deacons. So... A three-game stretch here. Three of the four are at home for North Carolina. Three of them are conference games. One of them is non-conference, but three of the four are at home, and that is what's so important. Again, when you look at the schedule, guys, for UNC, it's not that difficult because we're going to finish it up here. At Pitt, Wofford, at NC State. Yes, at Pitt and NC State are not ideal to have on the road because these are both teams that are going to be solid in 2021 are both teams that, if North Carolina is riding high and in playoff contention or ACC title contention at this point, could pull off an upset, especially Pittsburgh. We know how they are trying to play spoiler. We've seen them do it time and time again. They beat Clemson a couple years ago. They beat Miami in the season finale a few years ago, and the Hurricanes were number two. Would not rule out an upset at Pitt. And I would not rule out a close game against the Wolfpack, their in-state rival. But at the grand scheme of things, looking at this schedule, at Virginia Tech, Miami, and at Notre Dame are their three toughest games, and to me, the three biggest games for North Carolina. And I would not be surprised to see them favored in at least two of those. When you look at the remainder of the schedule, they are probably going to be favored in every single game. Every single game with the exception of maybe Notre Dame and maybe one of Virginia Tech, Miami, but maybe not. The schedule lines up perfectly for Matt Brown, Sam Howell, and this very experienced UNC team. 
it's not far-fetched to have them in the top 10. The FPI has them at 9-3, and three, and while it's still a solid enough year, while it's still a year that they can go to a New Year's Six Bowl game, for many that would be a disappointment considering how high the expectations are, considering how much talent they have, and how well the schedule truly lines up for the Tar Heels. 9-3 and three maybe sounds about right. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest to see them exceed that, to see them win the Coastal, to see them take on Clemson in the ACC Championship game, potentially with a spot in the playoff on the line. This UNC squad is for real, guys. This UNC squad is absolutely for real. Again, Virginia Tech, Miami, Notre Dame, the three biggest games on their schedule, but they're going to be favored in just about every single game they play this year, which means you need to watch out for the Tar Heels, not just in the ACC, but also for the college football playoff as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. Hit that notification button as well. Hit that little bell. Get our notifications. That way you don't miss any more of these schedule previews. We only have seven of them left. And that way you don't miss out on any of our prediction videos coming your way shortly after this as well. Also, make sure to check out everything down in the description below. Exclusive content for you guys across the board, year-round college football coverage. You do not want to miss it. All of that is down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.